just not going to give up, are you, folks? Just being the crickets. That's natu- nationally now. It's internationally now. Except there's certain spots. So, never in absolutes. There's always exceptions to rules, I suppose. But across this world, there's interesting things going on. And maybe it's time to take a step back and kind of assess all that to kind of notice what will, what won't work, what needs to work, and how things can change. And in some regard, there's evidences and examples for us, well, just about everywhere if we look closely, that there's not an inevitability that we're told. And there, the plan that's against us isn't necessarily going to come to fruition. The hard part for people seems to be it requires that we all do something. Uh, and we need to do something in a, in a, in, in a kind of a unified effort without becoming a group. That's part of how they do that. Every group will be infiltrated pretty quickly, as a matter of fact. I got to see this firsthand maybe back in the 90s. You have a group of people who gets up, starts to make a little bit of noise. All of a sudden, people start showing up, and they're not quite... They're like You start noticing they're kind of instigators. They're not really... For my position, I was... Had a lot more to learn then, but I had a lot I had learned, and the words just come out just a little bit off, and that's where I started to keen hone hone my uh, my radar, hone my antenna system, tune my antenna system to the fact that that people are brought in, which means that there's an understanding about this before we even got there, uh, to kind of work out how to subvert people, and that's an ongoing uh, defense in multiple levels and layers. That's set up before we even get into it. So it's not an easy thing that I'm asking. What's easy is getting involved in doing something. What's not so easy is accomplishing your mission, so to speak. And I speak it to it in that mission, that mission accomplished thing, because this is a war. And I don't know if anybody, uh, anybody who can has can actually deny that. If they're not, if they're denying the fact of that, I think they haven't looked really hard at all. Looking in the and maybe even looked in the wrong wrong places. But uh, before I get too far, this is BTW. RLM 300, 300 episodes approximate at uh, Real Liberty Media since we've moved here of almost five years ago, I think, coming, and uh, on a, a couple months from now, and uh, this is pretty close to my 10th year anniversary broadcasting totally on, on the other networks as well. So I've been here talking every week, and in the, the first broadcast was every day for an hour, and I, I took the noon, the noon o'clock Pacific position there, and that's partly why... Uh, I use it today. It's partly where my schedule works and allows me to work to come to you every every week that I can, hoping that nothing else happens between the between the times to get me here. Otherwise, like I say, technical difficulties are nature. And on that point, if I didn't understand what they were talking about last year, that 2018 was going to be an an off or an awful year, this year at the end of it in the transition. If it, if what's happened in the last six days around me is any indication, we're in for a very per- perplexing year. And I'm going to put put that out there for you all. We're going to be faced if what's if it, unless it's just me and this is just where I'm at, and I'm looking around, I'm seeing a little bit of the reflection elsewhere as well. We're going to be faced with a whole bunch of very interesting things. The interesting part of that is that they're all going to be solvable, but you're going to have to buckle down and do it. You're going to have to buckle down and look past the, the past the uh, facades, past the ridiculousness of what goes on, how things eventuate, how they aren't what they are, but they are what they are. In other words, they are obstructing you, but they're not actually not solvable. They appear in puzzles. It's like the jinn are running the world now all of a sudden, as far as my perspective in the first six days of this year. Uh, things, you know, that did not normally happen are going to be happening. That's if that extends out into the world. And so, uh, just a word of observation, because you're going to need to understand that going in, if you ever take on the gauntlet, take up the gauntlet to do anything, this is going to be even a more perplexing than than we we've seen before and and the problem is is that I've been trying to prepare you all for you're going to have to have your objective basis you're going to have to have your bright line in the middle of that narrow path and I think you know, again I can only go on what this last six days has been really bizarre and yet I'm here to talk to you today which could have been a threat 
and it didn't it didn't work out. I was able to prevail. Uh, other things are going on and making uh, the future a lot less uh, bright, but they're all prevailable. They, they're, we can work it through. And it's just the thing, the adjustments that are going on. But if uh, anybody said that 2018, because I didn't find 2018 particularly odd, yeah, it, it, there were some interesting little things, but not nothing particularly difficult. Uh, but wow, if, if what has happened in the last six days, it's nothing extreme. That's the interesting part about it. Nothing diabolical, nothing uh, er, death-defying in, in that regard, but still serious nonetheless. This is this is the, if this is the indication, and boy, we didn't we didn't we missed it by a year because this is the one coming, and this is uh, interesting for me to tell you because we're going to have to be prepared in odd ways to prevail against the things that we see. It's not just knowing something; it's going to be up to be able to work through. Like I said, it felt like a puzzle. It's like it's another level of a, of a game going on, but it's it's private to uh, each one of us. And so it's going to be an interesting thing. If, I hope it ends. <laughs> it's like it's my life, actually. You can fix everything. Eventually, you fix everything. Anything that come at, comes at you, you, you resolve it. But you, you know the annoyance and the nuisance and the and all the other negatives that come with having to do that. And you're never getting forward. You're always just dealing with these things. Now, those of us who have done this for a while, you, you try to do things better so that you you protect the future from happening. You know, and if you're going to fix something or something's going to happen, you fortify that so that you don't have that problem again. You, you end up doing a little bit better work. But it still takes the time focused almost as a distraction and diversion. And what I guess what I'm, that's what my point is that those things appear at this point to be thrown into this year for me. That it reminded me to tell you, because this is a, one of the things I don't talk about. We may be here now, but we hadn't been here now. That if this is the signal to me, I hope you've been listening to me, and I hope you're hearing what I'm saying, because it's going to get, the ride starts to get a little wild, but it's in an odd way. Yeah, it's really kind of an annoyance. And so you really got to learn how to focus. I've been telling you, you got to focus. You find a thing to do, because that's going to be your, it, that thing that you focus on will actually pull you through. The narrow path you stay on and the bright line you make on that path is going to keep you to that thing. And you will, if you can keep focusing on that as a priority, you, uh, in other words, if something it comes in your way and you have to deal with it, you deal with the distraction, but you deal with it efficiently. You don't get bogged down by it. And even if it's a surprise and it didn't seem like it would ever happen or you had it protected or whatever until something comes along, don't wallow in the fact that you have to deal with it. you got to get through it. A lot of time will be spent. Is that, I mean, you, you don't. You want to resist this stuff. To, you don't want to do stuff that's an annoyance or whatever. You know, just something that you don't want to do. It happens in life. But what I I looked at here this week was well, this is an odd way to get at that. You know, this is a, the way this occurs. The way things are laying down. It was almost more like a puzzle to solve than it was the thing that we'd seen or seen to do or knew to do or some you know something to fix or whatever. Anyway. Interesting first six days is all I can say. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't it, it doesn't continue, but I'm I need to tell you if if this is a the re reality of if, if I was just given you know the insight of what this year will be like, you know, you all need to know about that part because that that'll defeat a lot of people all by itself. You just got to buckle down. You just got to not let some of this stuff happen and work through the puzzle. It's going to test you in any in some ways. Um, it won't be without, it'll be within your capacity, but it won't look like it, and you're just going to have to work it through. And and so, nothing, I don't even know what to put on it. Be neutral with it. All this stuff is energy. Be neutral with the energy, and, and it'll it'll happen. It's just you're going to have to, uh, I don't even know what you're going to have to do. I just know this last six days, to tell you the truth, I didn't know if I was going to be here. Uh, not, not, uh, not terminally, but, I mean, with what was going on, it wasn't uh, looking good here uh, to come in to talk to you today, but um, I was able to overcome a lot of that, so that all those things, and so here we are, but uh, interesting, just a, an interesting thing, I decided to take a step back and look at that, because sometimes this stuff is is a message to us, and uh, anyway, this is a big one, uh, if, if this is coming through, those of us that have stepped up to fight this, all this stuff we see that's wrong, and do something, just something, uh, we're going to be... 
The only thing that came to mind, the jinn are in the world. <laughs> you will be, you will be facing these magicians, these, these magic things that just don't make sense, and yet they're not actually magic and they're not actually unsolvable. And so, let's move on here into the tabs as I try to just bring the notice from the news that we're told stuff's going on. I use it as an instruction base. I hope you picked it, picked that up over the years if you've listened and even in a short time. You certainly aren't going to get this and if you listen to 10 minutes and turn away, so I appreciate you if you hang around a little bit longer. And if you don't think I'm speaking to you at some point, why don't you send me a message in one of the links, uh, links or a Twitter or in the comments of one of the videos and let me know how I'm doing for you or not doing and I can kind of look and see whether or not I can adjust to that. Some people I'm going to be able to speak to and some I'm not. And what I try to focus on are those people that are not going to just listen, but actually start to do, take what I, I say and apply it for themselves. You know, I, I only re we'll pull this into an idea. To do that, you have to find something you want to do. You have to go find something that you want to resolve, that you find, that I perceive you, you will notice is wrong that you want to make right. That gives you the purpose. And you got to really lock into that because there's a lot to knock you off the path that, that you want to set yourself on. Back the, the fallen nature of the world in, uh, plans on you easily being diverted from the map path you've chosen and making wrong choices and think maybe getting more less humble about what you thought you knew. Uh, and this is the pro I keep telling you, even though I, I think I got some of this really well understood, I'm always leery about thinking I know too much. I'm always questioning, did I really produce the fact of that belief, that knowledge, and now that conviction? properly and go back and re-research my stuff really quickly and say, okay, I can't, I, I'm not now in the present knowledge of any new input, new facts that would change that, that uh, belief of what I think it looks like reality is and how I'm going to deal with it. But that's a constant battle. And so this is not a, this is not just something you learn and now I've got it. You know, this is an ongoing, it's like tools or weapons. It's like everything that you, you paint, brushes, colors, it's like anything we do creatively. It doesn't sound creative, and it's very mundane and boring, but we're, we're having to put our, our best effort in ways that are not understandable by this amoeba, this, this parasitic thing that's in our lives. It's, it's, it's this world, essentially. It's this fallen world, parasitically wanting to feed on itself. And one of the biggest parasites I, I can see in the world is in the first tab here. And I wanted to bring this up, not necessarily to get on the subject matter, and to denounce this whole thing, because that's, I went through this already based on land law and the rights of people to certain land and the rights that, that they would have to certain land when they want to claim land and the lack of right they have to occupy other people. But to show you in, that it's not an opinion that priorities are recognized in an international sense or even in our national sense, in the United States of America. And I say that also with regard to priorities and documents. When you prioritize a list, the thing on the on the top is important to recognize as maybe the better priority. Uh, it's not an absolute, but it gives you as you again all these are tools. So you apply these principles as you move through your understandings. It can start to give you a better uh, understanding of what your actual uh, apprehension of what it is you're dealing with. When you start to understand, let's say a list of things is prioritized for a reason. It's not just ad hoc thrown in there just on any list. I say that also to tell you that when you start doing that in your writing, you'll become more proficient in your writing, and it helps to organize and direct the reader to what, what's important for you as you then reassert, let's say, if you make a list of, of things, three things, when you follow the discussion farther beyond the list, you're going to discuss, discuss each one of those things in turn of their, prior, of their priority in there. So the point is here, the news of today now, or yesterday, U.S. Senate, now remember, now we're in a new we're in a new government at this point. The the elected, um, the selected, whatever the abusers in Congress, the cri criminal critters in Congress. Uh, uh, the Senate side, which is apparently a one party controlled, and now we, the House is now the other party controlled, burning burning United the America United States of America at both ends, burning the candle at both ends, consuming up what Americans think that they are. Uh, we see a priority now that is recognized. It, it, you didn't hear me say it or ever heard or ever understood this. You need to understand this. And this is going to start, this has to start to guide your thoughts into what, uh, 
when you go make a decision to go do something, when you do an analysis of the terrain, that this becomes one of the things you identify. What's what's someone's priority? What are they interested in versus what what you might be interested in? What is important to them, notwithstanding any duty you can develop in them, versus what is important to you? And I guess this this starts to talk about well, if you walk into someone with a with an agenda in their mind, and they're in a seated decision, you're going to be hard pressed to address that if you approach that with opinions or rationale that, and they're insane. And you try to rationalize it. So this also speaks to looking at someone else's priority. It speaks to a condition. It identifies immediately. Identifies starts to identify a condition. It identifies what 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 well the efficacy of your your input to it. And I'm kind of relating this now federal, but I, I'm also relating it locally. That you're going to have to speak through the mind why I've developed for myself and my colleagues and have and picked up and do. I told you a long time ago, you can get one, one seated decision, one, someone in a seated decision, and the law make a majority. And so the only way to fight this is not with opinion. When you see someone's priority who sits in an agenda, who wants to push the agenda versus what you see the other duties ought to be that they are doing. The only defense against for yourself or myself in this capacity is to bring the objective, black and white, duty and obligation and the law requiring that, so that it's not a question. And you don't allow your opinions to come into this because those can be argued away because you're dealing with an ins- someone who's insane who, who already, by their very first act, doesn't intend to make your law or you important. And we see evidence of, the, of a lot of this that I just detailed in this first story. A United States Senate first bill in the midst of shutdown is a bipartisan defense of the Israeli government from boycotts. Now, again, I don't. If you're interested in this, if you're not interested, it doesn't mean anything. If you're interested in this, you'll do the research. But what I was focusing in on this was the first of all the attack on the First Amendment, which has been determined by uh, already by two cases. But uh, here's the important point for this for you: and understanding that priorities, things that are done in order or in sequence or listed in order and sequence when you get into law or legal, or whatever authority, whatever, whatever is being used, or code, whatever is being used as an authority to prevail against you or hold an objective basis. It, it is important. But when each new Congress is gaveled into session, the chambers attach symbolic importance to the first piece of legislation to be considered. For that reason, it bears the lofty designation of H.R. 1 in the House, or S1 in the Senate. In the newly controlled Democratic House HR1, meant to signal the new majority's priorities, an anti-corruption bill that combines election and finance, campaign finance form reform together for voting rights or matching public funds for small dollar candidates. In the new 2017 Senate, the GOP controlled S1 was a bill called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that, among other provisions, cuts various forms of corporate taxes. Now, I mean, my mind's going like nuts. I want to discuss all this. I think anybody who's been listening to me long enough can do the analysis as I'm talking on these. I think these are inferior points to be discussed, where we went, what they were saying. But even so, when you look at those, those aren't necessarily so good for people either. But you see that there are priorities in 2017. In the 2019 GOP-controlled Senate, and I find an interesting prejudice written into this article as well. Uh, It was controlled in 2017 too, but any the GOP-controlled Senate, the first bill to be considered, S1, is not designed to protect American workers, bolster U.S. companies, or address the various debates over border security and immigration. It's not a bill to open the government. Instead, according to multiple sources involved in the legislative process, the S-1 will be a compendium containing a handful of foreign policy-related measures, a main one of which is the provision with Florida GOP Senator Marco Rubio as a lead sponsor to defend the Israeli government. The bill is a top legislative priority for AIPAC, AIPAC. So I'll just stop right there. 
the first bill out of the Senate. And remember, we got kind of. I want you to look at this because why? Why do I even talk about this? I don't even know what we can do about the the Senate, except it has a connection somewhere. The senators through through that in that body of membership have a connection back to your states, and they're supposed to reflect the interests of the states, not you again, but the states itself. That's the government of the state. And so you got to, I think we've lost a little bit of how this works, and, and, and that helps it helps to stymie our ability to learn how to address some of this. And what I'm starting to come on, I've, I've had an idea about this a long time ago, but, but it's it's now maybe coming to the fore. And I, I don't have anybody that's interested to do it in a seated decision. Uh, can't even get them to understand the law, but and how to properly apply it or or anything. But anyway, that's another problem. But one of the local ways we can control things is to be have our local governments control the representatives in the, rep in the representative republic that we don't do. We just absolutely don't do it. The Senate represents the state's interest. You notice they're turned outward, though. They're turned outward and international. And they're turned to a government that's known internationally as an occupier. And they're supporting a religious, uh, non-religious, but a, not a religious, but a political movement to displace people of a land that can prove they have the right to be there, as I've done the analysis on the land side of this. It didn't require all this war, but this is where everything went. But the, your Senate, the, the representatives of the states, is saying their priority is to a foreign non-nation that this article wrongly identifies as a nation. So we see another prejudice built into this article. In condemning the act, they're also supporting the fraud and deception. That I said, be careful. We've got to watch out about this. Learn to discern. So just to point out, the Senate, uh, who should be looking out, the states should be being represented in, in, the, in the up, what they call the upper chamber in, in the Congress of the United States, uh, should be looking out for the state's interest. No, they turned out and they looked out to a non-state's interest that they deemed to be a nation condemned as internationally as an occupier. And uh, for me, that's just indicative. The priority is not to help you in the states. I think many anybody reading this would see that. My, my looking, I'm looking at this and saying, where, were, where are we that we're not demanding that they stop doing that? Not on the subject of Israel, but why are they looking foreign-wise? Why aren't they just relating uh, the Senate looking at treaties brought to them instead of in, invoking internal foreign support before they've handled the state problems within the United States of America? Now, I pause there at the United States because I realize that's maybe all we have. We may not have America anymore. Why? I've done the discussion before. I've shown you all the places to look to show the United States of America was destroyed by Lincoln. And so we're dealing in div districts of the United States. It's a total different uh, organization now. But we have a Senate, and this may be indicative of that. We have a Senate that does not, on its first importance, bring bills that will solve problems in states. We have the states representing the interests of their interests uh, first. Unless it's saying those states actually represent this interest, which is another foreign interest. And aren't we now talking treason? But where are, where's the, the vest, the yellow vests in the United States of America about this? What I find intriguing to me, and I didn't mention it before, years ago, uh, when I, we got the, we started to find out we needed to, the miners needed to pull, but when I realized the miners needed to pull together, and we need to make a mining district more than a mining association, they both can exist, they have different functions. But I realized that we needed a governmental power, and we found it in the mining law. I did. And so I did a three-year analysis for myself, slowly coming to terms with what this would mean. And I realized that we needed to bring the miners, as I was doing that, meaning the miners need to come together. We need to have our colors, if you will. We need to be a, a real gang. We need to pull it together, because that's the where the world's going. The police have their gangs. The military's got their gangs. Uh, all countries have their gangs. Everyone brings out a gang. Okay, we're going to need our colors. And, uh, and at the time, the miners were pretty formidable and, and, fear and feared. Feared they were people of, were some were for some reason were afraid of miners. The old idea of a miner, you don't mess with one, was still holding in people's minds and hearts. 
and uh, I developed a yellow tele, a yellow T-shirt with a slogan, with a with a statement on it, and a and everything, and said, okay, this will be this will be the colors we'll wear when we go somewhere. Like a bunch of miners show up at a court case and sit in the in the peanut gallery, or we go to a commissioner's meeting. We'll all wear this yellow and black shirt. Yellow and black stings back. In other words, we were going to be a force to be reckoned with. And for a while, we were. I find it interesting now that the yellow vests are showing up. And in other places, I see the yellow and the black showing up. Don't know why. Just saying it's interesting correlation for me to say there is a thing you can do to show a presence. And part of that was driven by the environmental terrorists that would come to commissioner meetings and, and agency meetings to just to do the consensus process to destroy your property rights. They were coming in green shirts and blue shirts and red shirts. And for us, it just, uh, the natural color, I don't know why, but it came out that it was yellow and black. I think it was just a graphically, it stands out better. And so we brought our colors to those meetings. And so it was a very interesting dynamic. But at the time, the miners were unified. They were speaking in one voice before uh, somebody, some infiltrators came to blow it all up. And the point being that this may be where we're having to go. We may be seeing in the yellow vests something that I could see needed to be done as in organizational senses, that organizations that knew what they were doing, not just ad hoc, nonsense, chaos, let's just go, you know, scream and yell, that was very effective while, while it was unified. And, but then it got subverted. And there was nothing really to do about that because each each one who's involved has to understand that the subversion could happen and protect against it. You can't you can't um, have weak people. And so we're back to the responsibility being on each and each and every one of us. But uh, so we we look at we look at at this uh, GOP priority is not only not helping the states but it's helping a foreign non-state is the priority of the current Congress. And that you shouldn't actually be okay with that. And so let me move on. Well, so what do we do with it? Well, I've been looking at the, the congressmen, now not the Senate, but the House. But we have a bunch of congressmen uh, that are really eco-terrorists uh, under the color of a congressman or woman. Uh, no, I think they're all con congressmen. Uh, and what I noticed is that the they're revered. These people in the Congress are revered. They're not servants anymore. That if I think if we were to turn our attention to our locale and both through our counties, our counties typically are agents of the state government, the agencies. They're not the de jure governments that you thought they were, but they are part of the government, the state. However, in their charters, they also have a public body capacity. That's you. Now, on the priority list, that's kind of down the ways, and that, that may need to be looked at, but that's not a big deal for me. As long as it's there, we get to invoke it. Uh, that you have the set, the, you, you go to your local county, and you tell your commissioners, and you've got to find out who they are. You've got to understand what their priority is, where their agendas are, and typically they're going to be in the sustainability crowd and the destruction of your government, uh, of your life, and all this other stuff. So you've got to work that through first. And then we start to press... Well, what is this senator doing calling for a bill or approving a bill or going to approve a bill for Israel when we got this state has a problem here and our citizens in this county are, are having, are harmed by that problem? That should have been the priority. I think when we start putting local pressure to get the counties in their state capacity, there as an agency of the state, to start sending communications and earnest communications, to the government of the state uh, to call the senators in to ask them. You start making a noise. You folks that are in the countryside that are having political, you're a political minority, and yet you make up almost 50% of the population, you're going to start making an effect if you start getting together. And typically for some of these western states, as you see, it's the Republicans are typically conservative countryside folks. There's a lot of them, but they all don't know what to do. And your local counties are the ones that you go through to talk to. Now, we start seeing this signal that the government of the United States wants to find some little spit of land to protect other people who are fraudulently there, 
and recognizes international occupiers over your needs in the states. Well, they take money from you as well. You may, you know, oh, it's FRN, it's a fraud fiat. They're still at some point they're taking money from you to go to the feds to give back to you underneath these uh, uh, alternative grant, these uh, um, grant stream funding grants from the federal government, attached with all the sustainable nonsense. In regions, like I talked to you about the COGS, this is all integrated, even though it doesn't look like it. As I reported to you before, and we made a comment to the DEQ EPA, the state EPA, we said that the Israeli use of grass, sand and gravel, the Palestinian gravel, and the theft of it was a war crime, is what this country supports, the United States of America, counter to its own grants to its own miners, its own people. If you don't think this kind of a decision is local, you really have to sit back. So how do we how do we engage it? Well, we can't attach a senator. It's like you can't go to the, the attorney general, and you can't for the state, and you can't. They won't listen to you. They'll listen to an agency because it's like a big corporation, literally, if you haven't heard that before. And so they're, that's their corporate attorney. You have to go through one of their agents to get the attorney general. But for the Senate, that's what you have to do. And if we're not, then I don't know what our complaint is when we don't have other things that are important heard. When we make a big noise in the right direction, on the right point, objectively, I don't care about the Israelis. I don't care about the, I don't care about the anti-Semitism. None of that. They are over there. I have a senator who's not protecting the state here. No, their interests are over there. We're not doing that part, I think. And this is where I say, folks, just a letter sometimes. A bunch of you writing letters. You don't have a lot of time. Think clearly on a subject matter. Send a letter. May not get much, but follow it up with another one. Maybe even put some time to go visit somebody. That's on the Senate side. The county is even interesting with the congressional side. Why aren't the congressmen in all your places that you have people? Let's say the, I, I deal with the West and the, and the timber and the land and the land rights that are pretty well laid out. You know, I've talked about those forever. To me, it's relatively clear. I don't know if there's many questions that I have much anymore. The only questions are is now down to the property, and each property case is absolutely different, I've found out. But an overview, where you are having counties that are running agendas that are promoted by congressmen that have never gone to the county to elicit their needs, I think you have an in to go to the county and say, why haven't you called these Congress people to the carpet and said, why are you making these rules that are destroying our countryside? Is now, I think, a reflection of the people, of us. For as much as I, it's the disdain for me to consider to do it, I miss my life anymore, though, because no one else does it. I'm finding out in my niche I have to do this. Anyway, it seems, just to protect my own, my own thing. Because not many more people do it, we're doing, I'm stuck to this thing that I got, I got to do. That I think if all of us were starting to look at the thing more clearly, not bringing our opinion of how the Constitution works, but bring the failure of the function to do what things would do, I think we're going to do a lot better. And the failure of the function is written in black and white. No opinion, black and white. Why do the county, why do you allow the county commissioners or whatever, the local districts, to allow a congressman to set and create a policy, when you go read it, is destructive to your way of life. When those congressmen were supposed to be your voice. In fact, the Congress will make the bills to tax you. Supposedly, they're supposed to work for us that way. Where are we more than grumbling and whining and complaining that nothing works out? Well, when you haven't checked this kind of thing, and they've told us now, the priority for the Senate is off in some land that hasn't even been settled. In fact, we go there to make war with people, to bring in a, a Zionist movement to people that have an altered the dialogue and altered the definitions to make it look like they have a right. We are committing felony and treason in our own right, but through the Senate here. Where is the outcry locally to require the government to go to the state? I know it sounds like a lot of steps, but we got to get the pipeline full of these things. But, and get the mechanism working again and grease those uh, gears, folks. Get them working again. To call it, it call, have a, a, our own riot going on in our locales 
uh, to call out these problems. If you've noticed, I haven't talked about the political side of this. I'm saying that focus our energy outwardly when we have internal problems and you remain crickets to that allows them to continue looking at other places. In a way, I don't care if it was right as rain and pure as the as snow. The bluest glacial water over in the in what's going on in the Middle East that we should be supporting. If we've got failures at home and we it's not like they're not obvious to see at all. It's not like we're looking hard to find them. We're not pulling the tweezers out to find some problem. Uh, then we have a real problem within our own our own self, and then as it represents itself outwardly. Now I look at this a lot of this as it's a representation of us generally. Our government is not looking at our needs first. In fact, this shouldn't even been on the this shouldn't even be a thing to to look at actually. But we're so far from that. I'm not going to even suggest more than to say what I just did. So I see this first story telling us that the Senate is focusing outwardly and not focusing inwardly uh, when we have so many problems as a partly our problem for not uh, for making excuses for writing simple letters. And I would say on this, we would like to get a bunch of people together and uh, in groups and, and focus on certain problems and say, listen, why were you focusing outwardly? Well, we have the state needs to be represented in this capacity before the Congress. The county needs to be rep know that it has a representative and call that senator in and put him on the carpet of their meetings in a public display over why are they advancing all these other things when we need X, Y, and Z or A, B, and C or L, M, N, O, Q, P, whatever. Whatever. Why, why are we allowing this and then we complain too? And uh, part of me is always, I've always got this other thought, you know, it's not so easy because I'm just going to suggest to you right now, one of the things that have come on in this last six days was a recognition that uh, I don't know if we're a people that can pull this off. This is this is a, a, probably a big the, my big shock at this point. I'm not so sure now. I, I was hoping that it wouldn't happen. I was knowing it could. The realization that we're, we're not capable of receiving. It's possible, too. We're not. Most of well, most of society certainly is not, but even people interested may not be able to understand what I'm talking about. It's not just listening and doing; it's actually having to function within a condition and watching how you get taken down. I try to use an analogies to to explain how this thing is that we are up against always, whether you see it or not. It's transparent to you. It's been designed to be transparent to you. It's been designed that even if you see it, it'll become transparent to you. And it's like you're almost dealing with a ghost. The thing is, when you do certain things and then all of a sudden something pops out, you realize that that ghost is actually a functioning part of the system you've affected. When you start to look through what your, if you can say, what your eyes can see. I don't know that many people are, are do, able to do that. I don't think that anybody is able to understand it this for all the years I've been talking, understand the method that's up they're up against, and they're not capable yet. You're all not capable yet to watch how this thing in the world operates right in front of you, and you won't recognize it. I'm, and I'm saying this, I just witnessed it this week. It's the kind of stuff, if I get it, let it hit me, I just give up. I would just give up. And I can, I've heard so many people who had just decided to give up in the past. I, I really, this week I see now why. There's just no capacity in people. It's not because you don't have capacity. It's that we're being played so hard. And we're actually nice, good people. And that's, that's our downfall. We don't realize how persistent and continuous this a, passive aggression is how brutal the battle is that we're up against. I don't know that people can actually hold in their mind. And I, apparently I'm an oddball because this is what I focus on. On looking for the misstep that identifies you're in the process and you misstep and they got you in there and you have to identify how to get yourself back out immediately. I don't know that there's that anybody. I, don't, I really don't know if there's anybody that can do it. I, I've just had a, an awareness uh, shake 
And so when I this is the new re this is the new year. I'm I'm telling you there's some things afoot. And I don't know. I'm hoping like, I don't know why I do this. There's no evidence that we're gonna do it, folks. There's no evidence that you're gonna overcome your own fallen nature to go do what I'm asking you to do to, for all of us. For yourself first of all, but all of us generally. I don't know. It's not that you're not capable. I think we're up against the well what I see I see it. I see a ghost. I I can deal with the transparent the parasitic amoeba. I know exactly where to look at it. I know exactly what's going to cause it to go. In fact, I didn't even have it. One of the things I was just asking a friend of mine, I didn't even know an organization that was involved with some discussion. I said, I don't even know what that organization is, but I'll bet that R in that organization, based on the content of what this subject matter is, I'll bet that word is, the, the R means, what did I, what you all know what it would be, wouldn't you? I just talked about it with the cogs. I'll bet that R means the word region or regional. And you know what? I just got an email that that's exactly what that W, that R stands for. It starts for regional, a region, excuse me. Now, how predictable is this, folks? I guess my point is, it is very predictable. And if it's that predictable, and I can do it without knowing the context, but just listen to the dialogue of what's going on. Do you want dialogue to consensus? Just listen to the dialogue. It'll tell you. And when you can identify it, you need well. You'll have to if you intend to see this thing. Don't go over the edge and, and get and, and get lost. Uh, then you'll have to see that. And I'm talking down. This is getting down into your life now. This is going to be very interesting to watch. At least one thing I'm watching. It's kind of an interesting thing to watch. I don't like it, but it's it's like a train wreck you can't close your eyes to. That you're going to have to be able to identify this stuff as it morphs right in front of your face. When I explain to you the processings of how this works, you have to keep those in your mind and watch for them to start to happen. So, here we have what looks to be a distant condition looking off into a far land of an, occup of an oppressor who we're going to support as a nation, when in fact the Senate is supposed to be presenting the interests and needs of their state in a body that's supposed to bring the whole government forward relative to the state's needs. Not your needs. Understand. You've got to understand how this is laid out. You're never important. That's why you got to go to your congressman. That's why when they look very carefully, they say, well, you look on the, on the edifices of the states and they talk about the whole people. You get a big warm feeling in your heart. You know, oh, they're talking about the whole people. How great a place do we live in? They're not talking about you. They're talking about the legislature. Boy, did that freak a couple people out or not? Did you get? Did you understand that before? If you didn't, then you missed the trick. And so we got to stop talking about what we think. In our mind, we got to read. I do it. I'm not immune from it. I'll transpose words that don't belong. I did it again in the chat. Someone wrote something, or I don't know where it was. Oh, oh yeah, it was the chat. It was the. It was the, when Grimner was doing his brought his uh, blues. It was uh, the the trivia game that goes through. I put the word in the. There was a question, but I put the word in when I looked at it. I put the word that was the answer into the question, and I read it that way. Now, you have to understand, I'm half thinking about it. i got my broadcast I'm setting up for, so I'm, i got an eyeball that happened to come up. But I put the word in, in the sentence as the question. We do that. See, I just did it. That's a failure. Well, you know, if I would have sit, been sitting there, I, my mind would have said I got the answer, but I wouldn't have put it down. This is our problem. You don't act on your knowledge. Why? Because you thought it was answered when that was what they did to you. That was the trick. So we do this to ourselves. We'll put words in places that don't happen, and these people don't work. Don't They want you to do that. Well, it's so critical to take a step back and look at how this all works. Literally, look at how the structure is. My sense is I think you might be better off to figure out that, no, you were born into a prison, and it's your way. It, it, now it's up to you to work yourself out. And anything less than working out, it, you, you have no excuse. There's no complaint. I don't know why anybody complains. I don't know what their complaint would be, other than being just a, a, a whiner, just, just a complainer. I don't know what that does, though. At some point, you're going to have to look at yourself and say, well, that's not being very, very responsible to me either. And in, in as I said, you allow the being accessory to the crime against you, you allow it against everybody else. And so this little bit here we see the prioritization 
of the senators who were supposed to represent the states for a non-state oppressor in a federal international, in an international context, it's very telling here. I don't know what this intercept article wants to get. I see lots of incongruity within it itself. I want to point out to you that as long as we sit as crickets and observe this nonsense going on and don't rally up as a group of people, see, it doesn't matter what party you are when you, when you look at this. He wants to point out this was the senators of GOP controlled this and that and the other. It was still the first bill they brought in. It didn't matter whether or not there was a Democrats or not. And on the other hand, they want to make it like it's exalted in the, in the Democrats. It's a prejudice in the article. I've told you and have done it for years. The parties were the division. That's why they were created, to create a division in the people. It may have been one of the first things that they built it right into the Constitution. Maybe that's why when Patrick Henry said, I smell a rat. Okay, so we're so many years down the road, and boy, they've developed that out pretty well. But we're still whining about it. Instead of integrating and pushing the system to be what it at least professed to be. And that's why Jefferson, I think, was telling us, you know, this is going to take a educated, vigilant mass of people. Now, I'm not talking in the legislator uh, side. I'm talking about, you know, you, men and women in the country that are going to be roughshod by these, pe these, these uh, parasitic psychopaths. So here we have a, this all is on your back too eventually. Uh, you know, now these laws come in and you can't talk against uh, is the Israelis. Remember, I made the distinction between that and the Israelites. The Jews post-48 to the Jews pre-48, it's all there to see. The deception is right there. Uh, so, I'm, but I'm not going to go. I already went back. I already went into that. So I'm not going to talk. I'm saying that you, there's senators that were representing states' interests, not yours, but the states' interests, are looking outward, not inward. Your Congress critters are destroying you from the inside by making policies that utilize foreign policy considerations built into your local tax bases and your local policy and so-called law uh, basis for implementation to you, because that's where the Congress goes. So I thought this was a very important, there's a lot more to say. I don't, I don't know, maybe I said too much. Maybe I didn't say enough. Maybe I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't get too much feedback, actually. And thank you for all the thumbs up and all the help, and again, all the rebroad and reprod and uh, reproductions that are going on with the broadcast. Just get the word out, folks. It's just get it out there. Uh, I, I, that's all I can do is it's, it's like it's like a sales game. I got to hit the I got to get numbers. That's why I don't I think we're still going because we don't have that big of a uh, that big of a following, right? There's not that many people that really listen. That's indicative of another problem. But it's like a sales game. You got to go out there and hit thousands and thousands to get one, and that's a literal thing. Maybe tens of thousands to get one. And so if you're involved in that, thank you. Uh, we I don't know what else to do. I really I don't know what else to do. I see things. I see. I see dead. Dead people. No, I am talking about legislators. They're they're dead and they are vis invisible. They're ghosts to us as far as how they actually function versus what we thought they were supposed to do. And then when they don't function that way, we don't even respond. The, uh, the secondary thing on this was that I noticed another article. I think it came up like a day before. So the U.S. Senate now, first bill is to Israel helps support uh, uh, the boycott, to, 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 to deny you the right to boycott against something. You have to, you are now have to associate. Another violation of the First Amendment. But this, and so here we have not only is the Senate looking outward in a foreign occupier condition, they're violating your rights on their face. And I'm not even talking about how this ends up, because this is going to be a balance between what the Republicans want and the, and the, and the Democrats don't want. This is where we're not going to have the year that no, or a couple of years now that nothing hardly gets put out, which is okay. It's a balancing act. Who needs more laws anyway, right? But, you know, so be careful the ones that slip through, because they're not, they're burning America from both ends. But we have these senators that are supposed to represent the states, and they're willing to violate the state's authority. Which is really to protect your right to free speech, your right to free association, your right to petition the government. 
They've already put this number one. It's going to shoot through. You have no right to petition the government to stop it, and there's no provisions that I know of that will do that. So we have to work out another mechanism to show that it's still there. That's what's interesting about looking at, at all this and not, not being locked into one particular idea and opinion of the way things there are. I can now look at this and say, well, there's lots of, there's lots of conduits to the thing you need to do. It's just that you got to do it. But but here, the dissenters not only violating the, the constitutional provisions of, of right of free speech, association, and what, uh, whatever, uh, all this other nonsense. These people don't care. This is where we are. The caucusocracy is apparent. And no one speaks out about that part. And I don't mean even if you talked about that, they would kind of laugh you off. But if you come back through some authority, you show inside the authorities that you can do in the black and white. But this was totally uncalled for. Even as a, I mean, I'm talking in the first place as a comparison, let alone on the on the front end of it, where it's violent, fundamental violation. But even in the in the concept of it, comparatively, relative to what the states actually need, why why wasn't something there for the states' needs? The first bill. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to actually uh, justify what they've done. And I think the states are in the position to be the the hammer to draw. You remember, I've read it in the history books. I've wanted to. I've been waiting to see all this stuff. It never is going to happen, I don't think. But you can advocate for it. The Senate tours were brought back. They were called back from Washington by the states. Why isn't that happening? Well, because probably a lot of pe the a lot of the people in the in the states aren't aren't yelling for it. They aren't being the the paper yellow vest that I've been asking you to essentially be. Uh, the war, uh, so the senators not only do this thing, violation against the Constitution and don't look for the states, they're looking for a for a, an occupying force on a foreign soil to, to support, to be able to force you to support them, uh, to deny you to you the ability to object. Uh, there's another story that came with this. The war on Syria strengthened the anti-Zionist resistance. In other words, the decisions that the government of the United States have made, all apparently wrong to my mind as well, in my upbringing and how we were, I was told about diplomacy in the world and how it all worked, certainly all a lie since what they're doing now today doesn't mean anything, uh, to, it doesn't reflect that at all. Uh, they're saying that not only that our prosecution of Syria, which is predictable, I don't know why this is even a question, it has actually strengthened what we're now supporting, as a, uh, or the senators are saying to support, counter to what they're saying should be supported. In other words, they made left wrong steps. I shouldn't say left, but wrong steps all along, and they're making another wrong step. And everything they've done, if they were to support Israel, I should say the Israelis, there is a distinction between Israel, not the, state, the political state, but the Israelis, which are a political state. That everything they've done, they've actually bolstered the very reason why they have to tell you, you have to support what they've been doing. What I find interesting about this article, the war on Syria strengthened the anti-Zionist resistance. They say Zionist here, and I think that's critical to, for you to understand, a political movement. There's a solidification of, a, the, of being countering as uh, a political movement that comes under the cover of a religious people. That's a felony right up front. It's a fraud right up front. But what it got me with this writer was uh, he responds to a Middle East cor correspondent named Elijah Magnier, um, and that guy is pretty good. He has an interesting insight. I thought it was pretty fair insight. I think it's a pretty uh, – you, you can take a lot of what he says as straight-up uh, use for your mind to keep a track of things. Uh, but this author here says something I thought was interesting. Who'd, this author – the moon over Alabama, moon of, moon of Alabama, was talking that he hadn't made this consideration that is pointed out by Elijah Magnier. Essentially, the condition. Magnier, though, adds an important point, which I did not make. Now, this is my problem in looking at these things. I half look at the Middle East. That's not really what I'm focused on. What that does is that carnival mirror I look at to see what's going to come, what's come, what's reflecting for us in an odd way. But you look over there even in a half a glance and you can see the dynamics. I don't know I don't know why this wasn't seen. What I want to bring this link to you for is if you read what Magnier says, it, it, it is pretty much 
what you should come to, the chess piece moves that are going on over there. Uh, and why are we looking at it? Because this is how the United States and the United States Senate is being had been outplayed. This is how the game gets worked through. This is where we're failing. This is predictable. And to me, that's the important thing for you all to start seeing the predictability of things. It's not that you're all so knowledgeable. It's that you have your knowledge. You understand that. You don't profess it. You just look at it. You use your knowledge to apply to things. And it, it tells you what's going on. But my, I was just surprised that this uh, Alabama author, Moon, Moon of Alabama author, hadn't made this connection that's being made here. Indeed, the Levant is returning the center of the Middle East and the world attention in a stronger position than in 2010, 2011. If you look at the dynamics over the last six months in the Middle East, well, certainly we saw it with Russia coming in, but I mean the real dynamic starting to move through with the Kurds going on and what's going, what's happening, and the interesting little dynamic and dance that's going on between the United States, now exposing France and Britain being there too. Uh, the coalition is exposed without any real cover. Uh, the the or the pressure that Erdogan is putting on the border, actually transgressing the Syrian border, what he wants, what's going on, the dance that's going on. It's fascinating to see what's going on. That Magnier points this out points out that where we've laid our hand and our intention as the United States is going opposite to what that intention is. Now I bring this up because that then relates back to saying, why are you looking out and meddling? And we give the citation for we shouldn't meddle in other people's foreign affairs. We should never do that. And coming back and say, why are you arguing to stifle people's fundamental rights under the Constitution, which you have no authority to do in the first instance, Mr. Senator? And why aren't you focusing in your intentions on the states to help them when it's proven everything you do is a, a nasty product? It turns to no good. And so it, we need to be the principal, acknowledging through our force and effect of the medicated masses, pushing this concept backwards, back through the system, that the senators are doing and enforcing things that come to no good anyway. And again, we look at these so-called news articles to see what's going on. Now, the statement in here is important. I think you, you needed to write a short sum summary of what's the dynamic currently going on in, in this. It's very. You need to read this little excerpt. I won't read it here. It takes so long. But uh, this is, I guess, what I'm. I guess I'm saying in a more uh, concise manner you can find the new the notice the news to be notice of things you can develop to put together in a letter that you focus locally even to go after the senate's misdirection and priority to Israel relative to some thing you see the state itself needs that will require that you look at the state as something that has a need that's legitimate in other words, you also get to focus how the current government is not focusing on those things. In other words, they're violating you too. This is another technique about really working locally. You find out maybe the county's doing things that are harming people. You point that out. You don't do it by your opinion. You do it by the, the objective basis. And I can't speak across the country, because I don't know what everybody's problems are, but where you, again, fire seems to be a universal thing in the West. I can kind of speak to all that. You can point out all the stuff that's wrong that's going on wrong. That's real, actually really easy. If you don't want yourself burnt up. You better you better roll up your sleeves on this one, but it's, it, you can go in and find out what's going to go, what you need to do really quickly, and you can point out how it's been done wrong, and you just have to get people convinced that the they're, uh, they're, well, you just convince them of what the black and white is, and all of a sudden they realize they didn't really understand it. And now you're in a, con you're in a position where you have some guidance authority. Not because you know so much, but where you can point people to they can know so much. I guess it's an approach, too. You don't put yourself in the way of all this. You don't try to tell people how much you know. And my problem is I just start talking because I... I talk through what I know, and it's just too much for people. 
I just overwhelm them. I don't, I don't have a throttle for that. And I don't even know what it is about that. It just I just want people to know, and I've been tried to throttle it. I, it doesn't come out that way. It comes out as fast as it starts to come out. And I guess I, I trust in that, even if it's going too fast, because it's the truth. It's exactly what uh, my position on that as I analyze the condition and how it has to come out, how it will come out, what will be the ramifications, the, un uh, the, the un unintended consequences that may have to be dealt with. It all comes out of me at one time. It's as if you just, the, I told you, the flash of inspiration, the flash of insight takes a lot longer to get the mass to move. The speed of light is much quicker than moving the mass when it converts. That's my only analogy to that. So the inspiration or the insight comes in a flash. Trying to get the idea out and then into a practice, boy, that's a whole other matter. Cool, matter and energy. Oh, that's cool, huh? Now, we also then add to this complexity... Remember now, the United States Senate, I think it was back in 94, did not allow the Treaty of Sustainable Development. That was not allowed. It was Thomas Kaufman, I think his name was. Yeoman's work brought a map. You've all seen, probably seen the map. Red and yellow shows how all the rural areas would be absorbed by these uh, off, uh, off, uh, off uh, area, off limit areas. You all be confined in, into stack them and pack them areas. This thing happened in 94, long before a lot of people even knew about it. That was sustainable development. That was Agenda 21. That was the Senate stopping a treaty, which was in, their, in the interest of the states to look at. Because it was going to be imposed on the states through the regulatory impositions like they are doing it now. See, they got it through it anyway because of the mechanisms I told you over the years was working under the skin of this country that no one knows to stop. That same Senate I'm condemning today for having priority one for Israel was the same one that did not pass the Sustainable Development Treaty, Biodiversity Treaty and all that, back when. That I, apparently some people think was actually a treaty and passed because I saw some communication. I haven't got anything back. Uh, somebody on the Twitter, the Twitter that went through some links, however I got to it, I asked, I said, where is this treaty, the Climate Change Treaty? I don't know why why someone's talking in context of a treaty that exists. That's the Senate's job. The senators and the Senate are supposed to do the treaties, the outward stuff. But it's on the instance of the reception of a treaty, not its instigation to go support a rogue occupier who's bent on genocide and lies and deception. And I have no problem with a, any group of people that are making claim rightfully, but as I've identified for you on the broadcast numerous times, there is no rightful claim at this point that has been made. And it's an internationally recognized condition. It's called an occupation. But what is that a part of a plan? And I don't want to lose the sight here because this is hub. You think Israel and the promotion and, and the de demanding you can't object to this isn't part of this whole thing always still? What did I talk to you about before and why there's a war over there? Why they allow this stuff was to do something that the Senate did not pass as a treaty back in 1994. But that thing that they worked into that made itself, infiltrated itself into the country anyway by this consensus process was this thing called Sustainable Development, Agenda 21, as they were told across the pond, not here, because they were in deception mode. Where do we get that proof? The Bar Association's own House resolution documents over decades, multiple resolutions, acknowledging and promoting sustainable development, and explaining, I think, in one, 1991 or 2003, whatever one, which one that was, telling us that they did that, the, the, that they told the, the people in the United States it was sustainable development, but they wouldn't tell them it was Agenda 21. And over in Europe, they told you it was Agenda 21. They w didn't actually use, didn't need to use the word sustainable development, causing the question over the decades and causing the ability for those people to vilify you people who had the, had the, had the knowledge but didn't have the proof. Why I speak from where I speak when I saw this stuff going down and said, we've got to hit this a little differently. We talk in the Senate stopping that, but I told you that the government of the United States adopted the 90, 92 provisions of the uh, tr of the uh, of agreement that happens for biodiversity and climate change and 
would all not, and that we're the iteration, the goal, and the plan that happens to us today is considered Agenda 2030. I've read that, and I told you, all well, I've done broadcasts on that, told you within that provision was the, was the requirement to cause migration. So the Senate is allowing, and that destabilizes the Middle East, and it allows these uh, financial and monetary systems to control the future eventually, when, when they cause the strife in those countries. And they're doing it to advance a thing for Israel, uh, even though it's contrary to what the Senate did not allow to be done in 1994. The implementation of a plan to cause migration. And I told you, if you look at Agenda 2030, which they lay out for you, that it says in there, to paraphrase, that there's going to be some advantage to an egress nation and an ingress nation. And you look at that, well, how, I'm for utilizing migration, well, how is that going to work? And I explained a little bit of how it works. They cause a strife in a country, they destroy the country because they want to bring it, bring in the monetary funds and the international development things, and they want to bring everybody underneath a debt servitude to those things. They displace you because you're useless to yourself at that point, and you move. Mama uh, with her baby, Mama bear with her babies moves to a less quiet, a more quiet forest. As simple as that. And they drove all those people by war that could not defend themselves, and how can you actually, out into Europe that was sitting there under this agenda to receive them. It, well, how do you profit? Well, it's not just about profit; it's also about destroying societies. It's about reducing, bringing equal in austerity, in, in demands, in, uh, uh, in lack of capacity, in lack of power, destabilizing all societies into a lesser amount that requires someone come in and help and guide you because you can't do for yourself. Then I told you, you look at this and you're seeing the people driven out of Syria into Europe. It's destabilizing them. And you watch that they're going to now be coming, later you'll be coming and you'll seeing programs that will send them back to reestablish underneath new programs as they get there and new code structures, the, the countries uh, that they were going to, well, they were to, they were supposed to destroy Syria and that didn't happen. However, the plan works its way through, and here's the evidence of this. The same thing that the Senate did not agree to in treaty, they allowed President Bush, the old elder, to bring in as a voluntary thing across the nation that they now implement when they say, go support Israel. You can't talk against them. I mean, our support of Israel, which is to bring on the plan of destabilization, they're now, which is the cause of immigration from Syria, for people fleeing for their lives, destroying Europe, bringing, now that Europe's got to deal with it, they're going to bring it back, but they're not going to do it without a cost. See, this is what I keep telling you all. The governments, the power, will win on both ends of the equation. Now we have evidence of exactly that happening. After introducing mass migration to Europe, Germany now bribing foreigners to leave. Just as the plan is laid out, as I told you. Now we're bribing them with, huh, with what? German people's mo money, their work, the stuff that is sucked from them every day uh, when they go from working and don't get it to go spend for themselves. And I understand Germany, all those European na nations have very high taxation rates. And they agree with it. What's the better place to go do that to suck some more from them? And so the, the, the German people are going to be diminished even more to bribe people back into the, the, the destroyed Syria, which happens to not be destroyed by the West, but is being refortified by other people. Now, other nations are coming together, which is also a negative to the interest of the United States for all the national security interest that's talked about. None of this has been in the interest of the United States. And we just heard the priority for the, for the Senate is to promote this failure of interest, as opposed to looking at the state's needs and making legislation immediately to help them. Now, I'm making a long term here talking about all this. Maybe it doesn't make any difference to you. You're not going to do a dang thing about it, but that's our problem. We're not commanding uh, from the hull of the, 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 the bottom of the ship. We're not commanding the needs of the boat. 
And we have every power of ability to do that is what's interesting to me to see that we're not doing any of it. And because we don't, I think it's just a, it starts to fall out. This is indication that A2030 is exactly what I told you it was. It's the first first indication to me uh, that, again, the people of the German people are going to be taxed some more to now get rid of the people that were planned to go up there to do exactly what they were to do, to sho shove them back and get them back to entice them back to the country while new things happen down there. And I already told you, even if you look at Russia and China being involved with Syria, remember they made bricks, and the IMF is sitting in bricks. And the World Bank is this neutrality thing that is going to have its access as well. And not in, I don't think anybody's not a part of the, 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 the international settlements group up in what Switzerland or whatever. So it's all an integrated dance. And so we can sit by and watch all this stuff go on. We can watch the evidence of it in the news of what's happening. Uh, do you, in fact, they're, they'll, they're now saying your country, your country now, your, your country, your future now is their promotion to get you to go back. They'll pay you money to leave. Well, the German people are going to pay for that. More big parasitic sucking sound from the vitality of the German people. It's partly what the yellow vests are talking about. Listen, you've sucked, you're sucking, uh, blood out of a turnip here. And they made it so far that people were, I told you it was going to go until someone, all this happens until you stop, you stop, you stand up and say it's not, I, enough is enough. And at that point now they did it, and they had those people so depleted, there's almost not enough the government can do to fix it now. So I don't know how, how long this is going to go, but here we are, the first of the year, we're seeing it fire back up because the government can't. They are driven through this agenda so deep, and the government allowed that, that you have to go out in the streets, at least in France, in order to make your voice known. And so they got us in a different way in the United States of America, where you don't even send a letter and you don't persist. You don't get together with people on point. No, you'd rather whine. You'd rather focus on the wrong things and write those letters. No, you don't listen behind the woodshed too close. As I've told you, don't why make an argument on something you don't need to? Why give something the air to breathe when it shouldn't even be there in the first place? You'll be handed that thing to argue about. You should just not just ignore it and go to the find the point and go do on go do that. Here we have an agenda twenty thirty being implemented. The return now of the people, as I told you, is predicted in the document. I read it in the document of how this works. And these senators who are promoting who don't want you to speak against Israel are also the ones that have allowed, notwithstanding their denial of the their denial of the Treaty of 1994 for the biodiversity, they're still allowing sustainable development by supporting the Israel cause, Israeli cause. Again, evidence that they're not right thinking. Your states should be recalling these people. You got voted into office, but you're not right thinking. See, we also have a condition people don't look at. You. If someone's not right thinking, you can take them out of office. We can impeach these people. Why don't I see any of this going on, even whatever? Why don't we just think that's a game? To, let, let's see what we can. This is a real, the political Game of Thrones. Why don't we do that? No, no, we'd rather sit and eat popcorn and watch the Game of Thrones given to us. Why don't you go down to your local county and say, why don't you call this guy in and ask him why he's looking outwardly and not doing stuff that we need for the state? Now you're talking in support of your county government. Some of you go, oh, we can't do that as government. Well, fine, that's the reality you live in. They're also the ones that are stealing from you, too, because you don't understand about the property taxes. You don't understand about ad valorem. You don't understand how to make the first letter to challenge it. You're going to pay them anyway, and, but you'll complain about all the stuff that they come to serve you with without ever supporting the fact that they're doing it all wrong. I don't get that part. I don't get that part. Maybe I've never been that way. I've never been taken someone who makes a, com, a, a, a command for me, a uh, demand of me. I've never, ever really been too good to it. Anyway, I'll write a letter. for. I'll just write a letter just because. But when uh, over my years of looking at this, I see we got direct cause, and we're not writing letters. I have to worry about not a worry, it's not a worry. I have to wonder about us, the people. And when I start looking out in the world and I see what this comes about, how the, how to eventually, how this all works, doesn't work together, this coagulated blood clot we call society, I just have to shake my head.
I just have to shake my head. And if I get too deep in that, I'd, like I said, I about give up. I just don't even know where to go with that. Who do I, where do I go with that? So we're talking about local authority and that we have these, what can you do with the state and the feds and imposing local things that work federal because they're interfering with your local peace and quiet and how we're not supporting, you know, again, I may not agree with someone's political uh, ideas, but if, if they're going to start doing the law, I don't care about that. See, I don't care about the politics to begin with, so it's not really an issue for me. And I've also told you, if you're going to get someone who's going to work with you, even though they're in the system, why not? Here we have an indication that local power has the ability that doesn't speak much, but can speak if we never had the example before to at least start to begin the question, even if they would, however they approached it, whether that's viable or not, you start seeing that these tools are available that if you started to figure out that was one of your conduits and you wanted to change something, that you could start focusing pressure on people locally to get things to be done this way. Here's a little example of that. Atlanta prosecution, prosecutor sues DOJ for blocking investigation of incident where cops shot a man 59 times. If you are one of those people that think, oh, I don't do anything wrong, you need to go read this story. And then just know from the title, the federal DOJ took on, and they do this to the local people. They do, the feds have a power I don't understand because I found out they don't have a power. Oh, they got some pressure they can put on you. But there's no actual legal authority. And people in the local level bend and break immediately. They don't even know how to address it. They wouldn't even call out the threat to them once they're, the federal DOJ puts it on them. And so we have a real defect in our people, too. So like I said, it's not government. It's people. It's weak people inside what's going on. And other people that are as weak that allow uh, harm to come to their, their, their co-officials, their co-people. Atlanta prosecutor sues the DOJ. The federal DOJ is being sued by a local prosecutor. Why? Because the federal DOJ took over an investigation and then wouldn't give any of the evidence of the facts of the incident where a man is in an apartment, his girlfriend's apartment, who's approached by the cops who then gets uh, federal cops here. Fed, what are they doing there, folks? See, where was your sheriff to stop that? See how the local control was missed? The marshals state court marshals, United States marshals and, and FBI. What's the United States marshals involved? That's a court originating official. Breaks open a door and shoots a guy 59 times. The investigation is taken over by the perpetrator. Just like the Finnicum case, folks. And we sit at crickets all this. But it's here that you see if an Atlanta prosecutor has sued the DOJ. Now, I don't know where it's going to go. What they sued on was FOIA. So I'm not so sure about this to start with. But if it's the information that they need, and that's the only way they can get it, he's done one good thing. I would say there's some federal laws that show obstruction of justice is a crime, and he could sue for that locally. And what would they do? And as I've talked to you all about this, they would uh, an attorney of the, of the federal government, who is of the DOJ, would conflict of interest right there, would certify that those guys were all within their job, or women were all within their job duties at the federal level, and the case would be removed to the federal court. What have I told you that the prosecutor should be able to do? Assert that that's a fraudulent assertion certification to protect and cover as an accessory. Those federal officers that had no right to do what they were doing to an innocent man. Do we hear that case come in? No. And I've talked to people before, a long while back, to try and find from so-called authorities, attorneys that I could talk with. They don't. They look at you with the deer in the head, like, "What? Where'd you get that?" You show them. Then you show them the code, and they get a. They get that. Their eyebrow goes up, like they'd never understood that was actually there. Oh, that's pretty powerful. I said, "Yeah." So why isn't that being done? Well, I don't know. So this. Uh, the best this prosecutor can do, indict a ham sandwich, get a conviction, but the best they can do against the federal DOJ, again, now looking at the overall idea, I'm telling you, you live in a militarized district. 
Maybe this is another proof of that. But notwithstanding that, the local prosecutor can go after the feds, even in a FOIA. Where you find that's a necessity and your local prosecutor is not, you have a point of weakness in the prosecutor locally. Now, they'll say that you have the ability to get rid of them. I suppose you do on the election. So maybe that's one of the reasons that you do it. But you publicize why, why you're doing it. And maybe the next guy isn't so bad. Maybe it actually would even better. It shakes the system up a bit. And they start to show that the crickets are not crickets, actually. And they've had enough. And they better start towing that line that have been covered over by sand. And the, the crickets are not crickets are coming with the broom to clear the, clear the sand away from the bright line. Are you going to be one of the non-crickets with the broom to clear away the bright line and get these officials to do something, or are you just going to complain that they're not and hurting you? Again, the story is atrocious about what happened here. I can't get into all the answers about what, why or why. I can just tell you, you now see that a prosecutor can sue the DOJ under FOIA to get documents to expose what's going on. Why didn't it happen in, I don't know if I can make an issue, it just came to mind. Why didn't that happen in Finicum? Because to me, I saw enough public information to tell me that the governor of Oregon was in, was in, integrally involved with the murder of Finicum. And I didn't want to mean to even get off on this tangent, but I'm, I'm going to end right here, but why are we taking these tools as a, as a people in a society subject to this tyranny? You're innocent and, and marshals show up to a house they don't belong in relative to you and, and murder you with 59, like 59 slugs was the, needed to stop you anyway. This is a society that you live in. Can't be the America you were, the United States of America you were told. Can't be the place where I hear USA, USA, USA is being chanted. And if you won't look at this, then I have to wonder about y'all that won't look at this. So there's another conduit. Your prosecutor relative to federal crimes that are going on. Now, we said with obvious killing people 59, you want to know the information. It's not limited to that. It's limit, It's unlimited, only limited by the amount of laws you can find violated by federal officials in your locale that, uh, that the prosecutor ought to start studying. And I think you get enough people pressuring the prosecutor to do that, or you go to your county to pressure the con prosecutor to do that, and you're going to find out the, there's another weakness there. And so that has to be dealt with. If you think that this is a government, good government, the bad, governments are bad generally, you're going to find out it's a weak links all through the system that we the people, we these people out here that, that have been inculcated with, the, with celebrity in the government, by celebrity in the government, they aren't what they say they are. They won't do what they're supposed to do. And they, they get away with it because they're like any criminal. And this kind of brings up, for me, this next story, which I really don't even touch to this stuff. It's just an unseemly thing. It just seems to be the nonsense in the, in the world. But I noticed a couple of things in the story that kind of piqued my interest, as, as these things do. You know, this X, uh, no, NXIVM leader, Rainier's lawyer, calls case Hollywood-driven. Well, this happens to be with supposed an alleged cult, uh, the women of which would get branded, and they had meetings, and they're supposed to be, you know, what, uh, personal uh, lifting, uh, I don't know, make you successful or whatever. I don't really get, know too much about it. it. It's just a bunch of nonsense to me. Uh, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I just don't have a thought about it. More than I read the story a bit, because what got me was the Hollywood Driven. That kicked my mind over to Kim.com. His copyright case is Hollywood driven. It's uh, the industry is uh, is attempting to take him down, utilizing the United States prosecutors, who you now will find out will cover up their stuff if he didn't know before, and won't give a local prosecutor the information of the investigation. That, that that right there should show you something and should bother you just a little bit. But this Hollywood driven is the thing that got my mind my mind to think about Kim.com, the federal prosecutor. The, the an, a corporation of the United States, an industry in the United States using the federal prosecutor to go after a private party in a different country, that that man was never in the United States. And yet they're using this authority that they create, fabricated. 
So this Hollywood driven means that we have again Hollywood uh, driving a criminal imposition potentially, taking copyright which is civil and making it criminal, utilizing private industry to run the the levers of government to go after people. And I see this, and that's this this phrase Hollywood driven started to take a little bit more importance to me, even though I could care less about the subject matter of their their goings on. What I found interesting in this was some statements, and they're instructive. And it reminded me that these are evidences of the things that you should consider in your mind when you're moving along. This is done through an attorney. This shows you what they do. This shows you something you'll learn to do. Something I tell you to do all the time in questioning the authorities up front. Don't let them just pull their stuff together. What was intriguing to me, and I'd never thought about a superseding indictment, as grasping for straws that this attorney now brings out in his analysis. Uh, I don't know if many of you have been involved where you get charged and you get charged by superseding indictment and there's another superseding indictment. Never thought of it as grasping for, for straws because the prosecution didn't have a case. In other words, they keep superseding indictment to try and bring through more, more charges to make something stick. And so, just an insight. But the statements here, the truth is the sex trafficking charges that led to this misconduct are baseless and are hanging by a thread, stated the Manhattan attorney Rainier, Fortnite Rainier, Rainier A, I guess. He said, he said the federal prosecutors in Brooklyn were, quote, still trying to cobble together a case by promising a last-minute superseding indictment. Let me just tie this back to the last r report about the, the DOJ not giving any evidence. See, maybe there was no good evidence at all, right? There's no good evidence at all to provide. That'll be an interesting answer. We have got nothing to provide to you as an, as an attorney prosecutor. So they're cobbling cases together. That brings up, boy, that brings up big time the Bundy case, doesn't it? But superseding indictments were used. They didn't have much. They keep throwing stuff in. And this is the one of the main problems I see with this. When you get the uh, DOJ, which is also the executive part of the branch of the government. Remember I told you, you're all considered an enemy combatants and, and misdemeanors uh, before their national security need. And you're subject without any right of innocence at all. And then they stuff the record full of nonsense and cobble together these things, which we now see may be evidenced by superseding indictments on their face. That's the first time I've ever heard about that. I always thought the other way, superseding indictments, literally that they were getting good, you know, they were having, just finding more and more and more against you, which they had the right to compile. But this look shows you the weakness that is it, that you can look at, and I don't, they, this is in a criminal sense, this also happens in the uh, civil side, when some other side keeps throwing stuff in you can analyze it for its irrelevance very quickly, which I tell you to respond to, you know, again the rules of evidence, you put the, is it relevant, is it material, is it pertinent those are the basic three a lot of times you can kill something just by looking at those but he goes on to say, prosecutors say Rainier and his co-defendants engaged in extortion, identity theft, money laundering, obstruction of justice, and harbored illegal immigrants for financial gain. When I read that, well, I'll ask you. When I just read that list of extortion, identity theft, money laundering, obstruction of justice, and harbor, harbored illegal immigrants for financial gain, what came to your mind? Did you say the United States is a court criminal justice system? Did you say the state criminal justice system? Did that come to your mind when I read extortion, identity theft, money laundering, obstruction of justice, and harbored illegal immigrants for financial gain? Did the United States criminal justice system come to your mind? Because it sure did for me. And I know that for a fact because I've got a court case that sued on every one of those things. And the uh, officers of which were sued didn't ever answer. They got to need another default judgment on a lawsuit stating that the government's criminal justice system commits extortion, which is your civil rights, but this was implied to someone who was a grantee. Didn't have the right to apply the civil rights. Extortion, which is your civil rights. For those of you that never heard that before, go read it. Your civil rights are extortion. They can extort against you. That's the government's right. Where do you read that? 42 U.S.C. section 1981. 42 U.S.C. section 1981. Extortion, identity theft, 
ID, straw man, you hear that there, folks? Money laundering, they come under the pretense of the creation of a straw man under a fraudulent cause to extract money from you and put it into their system to clean it, to launder it, to make it look like something that was legitimate. Obstruction of justice. Well, you don't get any through this system. So there it is right off its face. And harbored illegal immigrants for financial gain. Did you catch that, folks? How you are an illegal immigrant to that system. They have to do the identity theft and create a false identity to get you to be an entity in the system in order to extract from you what they do. So in this case, totally thing I'm not even interested in, has a statement in it that shows, that explained to me what the prosecutors claim are what they do. The attorney on the other side says everything about this case betrays a clear reality. The prosecutors read about, read about branding in the New York Times, spoke to different people writing books, making podcasts, and, or starring in television dramas, and endeavored to construct a criminal case from, the media, from media and Hollywood-driven detritus. And I thought, read that, and go, well, that's every case they, he's right. This is every case they do. They find stuff from all over the place. How many times they do social media, they catch you up, and they create this stuff. He calls it Hollywood-driven. Again, I would rel related that to the copyright case against Kim.com. Industry using the government to beat people down. And the prosecutors are blaming the victim of the very thing they commit. And I don't say that as an opinion. I just told you. I've got a default judgment on a lawsuit that was alleging these very same things against the judge, the pros local prosecutor, and, uh, well, some other people. They didn't answer, folks. See, I didn't make it a question what they done. Got the evidence, submitted it, moved in through equity to say, you didn't have the right to do this. And then, moreover, if you did, you didn't have the right at all against the grantee of the United States. And what have I just done? Brought you back to the law of the land. Anybody who looks at default judgments know it's a binding contract, between binding agreement between the parties, and therefore they have agreed that these courts do exactly what the prosecutor says the victim of this, what the government does, is exactly what the government does. Right here in this story. If you don't think you can find stuff in the news, like I said, I'm not interested in the story at all, but here was facts and details and com confirmation of things I already know that it sits there for you to see. You can see it right here. Take it to the bank for yourself. Why? Because if you think you want to do anything and you don't take this into consideration, you're probably going to be fodder. Uh, Mac attorney William uh, McGovern said on court papers Friday, now this is where the technicalities of your legal of your uh, where I found the technicalities of an indictment are important to to address. He he talks about what they did, uh, the submitted papers to do this again. No decision. I'm just pointing out this is what you how you go about it. This is what you minimal at minimal what you're looking at. But an interesting thing of what you're looking for and what we do to ourselves. We we accept things have happened because we're told. It's like interjecting the word. Like I said earlier, I interjected the word of the answer into the question and never thought about. Never thought it as a question. I just answered the question as the answer, putting the word to the the answer to the question in the sentence, and I replaced the two or three words that they try to describe the word for. And this is where this speaks to that condition. We read things and we just accept certain matters uh, being there when, in fact, they at, weren't at all stated part of it or even proven or even admissible at the level they were asserted. And so this attorney attacks that. Uh, attorney Mark William McGovern said in court papers Friday, the indictment against his client failed to provide the notice, listen very carefully, notice, quote, as to whom the victims are forced of forced labor are, as to whom the victims of forced labor are, where such conduct specifically occurred, or a reasonably precise time period when it occurred, let alone what the adequately, inadequately alleged forced acts of labor were. 
So what are we looking at in this disclosure by an attorney who writes a paper in an article? He's showing you there's elements in the citation that must be met. It must be met by these prosecutors. They're alleging he's doing all this, these people, this guy's doing all this stuff, but they have to be able to prove it. It's not just that they say he committed extortion. What they have to have? They have the who, what, where, why, when, and all this other stuff. On or about this date, this particular thing happened, and contrary to the law, this law here, with this person, or this whatever, or doing this thing at this place. Apparently, this superseding, this cobbled together thing, the government comes with all the power and force of government, didn't even have the basics, as we, as, as this one side tells us. But notice it's, the, the citation is to provide what? Not an, an indictment now, it's a notice. This is very interesting to me. I mean, it's not unknown to me, it's just interesting. He correctly identifies these things as notices. What is that? That's your due process. You have to be given notice of the charges against you. And they have to have a certain amount of information. Why is this important? If you just seen this, seen this paragraph, and you're kind of fuzzy on how this all works, you could read this criminal failure. You can put this in the civil side, too. Oh, I've read some stuff where a government comes against me. I've had it where they come against me, and they name these generalities of violation, but they never specifically said anything particular within the context of that charge that they had the right to charge. And so even within this article, I can take it as a, it says notice, we get notice. What is it supposed to be required? He says it was failed on these points, and I can tell you that's a who, what, where, why, when. If it's not there, they're just making stories. And this is an instructive to us. If we do that, we'll fail too. In other words, you go through and see the list. I've got to have some specifics now, not my opinion of specifics. I lead with the facts. The facts are objective, not what I make up. And then here was an interesting thing that I noticed that I needed, I wanted to point out in this article. Like I said, this is interesting. I didn't, what I guess I was interested in is that I always had no interest in, in the article, but this report caught my eye to be instructive. Uh, quote, equate, and, and this is another thing here that they do. Uh, they, the government, the uh, code enforcement, uh, the attorneys, the judges, you got to listen very carefully. That's why you got to know your subject matters, whatever you're doing. It's why most of us lose all the time. We're not paying paying too much attention. We we tend to give over too much authority, even though we're standing there saying you're authority. In other words, we we question that they even have the authority or that they're speaking from an authority. But we never really apply that. And this is my fit. What I have a, a problem with, and it's it's dangerous for people. I guess I have a concern for people because if they miss this point, they're walking themselves into a grinding machine. Pretty simple. But, he, quote, equating collateral. Now, okay, so there was a, a discussion. Maybe I should set that up. There was, um, within the construction of all this, the pe the women had to give over some property of some sort, some something, uh, that would be held against them. So in case they spoke out, it could be used like a blackmail. And so the government claimed this collateral given to the this this guy or this organization, was a blackmail. And th this is how they went about proving it. But then you find, like, I remember I said the rules of evidence look very carefully. What's the first three you're looking for? Is it the material that they're bringing and presenting relevant, material, or pertinent? Those three. We'll see that, that this attorney looks at it this way in this statement. He'll set up the, com the government's position, but then he'll show how, what have I told you before? The, even the people I absolutely admire their research. 100% right on the research, but they are irrelevant to a particular subject matter, is what we'll see here in this statement. Equate, quote, equating collateral, this collateral that was given by the women in this organization, to blackmail, the government cites a legal textbook noting that it is uncommon for blackmailers to spill secrets once their victims have gone to the authorities. This assertion is irrelevant because many DOS members left the organization without having their collateral released long before the initiation of the instant prosecution, which demonstrates the lack of coercive effect of the collateral. What are we looking at here? He says, use the rule of evidence. 
what they assert out of the textbooks, which is the truth, if it's what the government goes on anyway, it's the textbooks, it's what everyone follows. You, that's what they're. That's the black and white objective standard. What it said in the textbooks, what we can say is 100% correct relative to its ap proper application, was completely what by the rules of evidence, at least irrelevant by this attorney's assertions. So he destroys a textbook implementation, 100% right, but irrelevant. What I've told you to be careful of in every piece of information you gather anywhere. It may be 100% right, and someone's selling the point of how right it is, and you look around, and it's right. But is it relevant? Is it pertinent? Is it material, really? Are the questions you begin to ask as we go through with how these people are taking us down? And, that, and, I, and I say that because it, as applied to alternative dispute resolution, the alternatives they apply are often and almost always unlawful. Not are they just irrelevant or immaterial or impertinent. They're unlawful. The other problem is how can they be irrelevant, immaterial, and pertinent if they're actually in support of the outcome what they're talking to? And they've got you. The whole thing now becomes irrelevant and impertinent or immaterial to the law. It's actually a subversion. It isn't really what we're talking about here, the government having the standard of burden of proof to do some a cause uh, that's correct in the law. And he's saying, wait a minute. Well, it may be textbook that this condition exists, but it's irrelevant to the facts of this case. So here we have another example where another, an attorney, someone outside of uh, what I would say, if you're looking for an attorney to be the proof, they, there's a recognition of uh, this, the basic rules of evidence and that it becomes very important to identify relevance relative to accuracy. So we can have people that are 100% right on their information, but maybe it's just not applicable. Maybe it's not pertinent to the point, the subject matter point. Maybe it's not material at all. And you can do a study on each one of those words. See, this is just the point. So your mind should have this, these, these standards in your, in your mind as you look at things, and you qualify them really quickly. And the more of these things you have in your mind as qualifiers, filters, you can cut through information very, very, very quickly. And that's why it's a flash sometimes, not flash somebody, thank you being there, but a flash in, comes in your mind. Well, and that's what it's, your mind does this pretty rel pretty regularly once you get it cracked and tuned up that way. We're talking about tuning. That's what you do. In fact, that's something I was talking with, uh, talking with uh, Vinny, I think it was, and I said, make sure the facts are right. Forget the questions. Go after the facts. R make those settle. Settle those down. And then go there. This is just the way you do that. I can only say that at least when you do that, you go, you're a whole lot, your steps are a whole lot cleaner, faster. So we have the prosecutors uh, again. We have information that they'll they're doing what they that they take claim the victims of what they're doing are doing. They are really the criminals. Uh, you find out the government is not really looking out for you. They're looking out for an agenda, an interest outside of what you can find looks like they ought to have been. A lot of that is the test of whether or not you'll remain silent. That's why I kind of con my whole context is the fact that the silence is our enemy. It's the victory against us. Because this whole thing that we're born into is, is set up to be a properly presented. And if you don't present your point, you will not get it. It just it, unless someone else agrees with you that it is moving forward, then your position is pretty well silenced, and that creates this disgruntlement. I can tell. I mean, it does for me. So uh, anybody who's not really engaged is not going to be nothing more than disgruntled and dis dismayed and dis dis dis, dis whatever dis. You just be dissing. So this information is important at the to get the elements down, to get the facts of investigations down, to get access. You see there's obstructions everywhere else, everywhere. You see the government does wrong on, I told you the two-edged sword, the government wins on both sides if they can get away with it. It wasn't for this guy, no matter whether he was an attorney or not, to point this stuff out. That indictment goes through without that objection, see? And he, let's say, to show you how this works about getting you have to have your say, when they make a notice against you, wherever it is, and you don't respond, they get to go however def they get to go move forward however deficient and unlawful that that imposition is. 
And I've explained that to you relative to miners in the 3809 regulations. Not even apl applicable to the minor uh, grantee. And yet, minor grantees get beat down by it all the time because they don't throw it off immediately. A complete, uh, completely unlawful, and yet people go to, go to, um, well, they go to prison, I suppose. A lot of times those prison sentences are kind of beat down because they know what they're doing wrong, but you're going to pay a fine. You're going to go to, through a law to prosecute criminal prosecution. And it's all, it's all fraudulent. It's that extortion, the identity theft. They're, they're making you someone less than you are. They do, they bring you in as a foreigner into that system. They immigrate you without your understanding that that's what they're doing into that foreign system, and then they take your money. Now, how can I say foreign? Well, if you look, it takes an application, folks. It's pretty simple. And early on, when these states transferred into the Model Business Corporation Act, it was anybody who didn't have an application didn't get the protection of the new state. You had to apply in to they to get to allow that allowed them to have the authority. Otherwise, they didn't have any. They didn't have any. And what did people do? They said, oh, well, I better get the application. And you're doing that today, all everywhere. You're doing that today in your silence. More important, and people won't agree with this. They'll argue with me, but it doesn't matter because the reality is the reality. You're still disgruntled. You're still having, you're still dissed. You're still dissed, and you're doing nothing. Yeah, how you do, Meritus? I see you now. One line pop up <laughs> in the chat, which I don't see much, but uh, there it is. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Google. So now we move information, and with the corporations, they use a corporation is using the the, the, the DOJ to beat down Kim dot com. The, now this attorney says, "Well, this is this is Hollywood driven. This is the media MSM driven. Hollywood MSM driven. The DOJ goes to all these not even sources of of, uh, of facts. The, the stories of sources of facts. The false news to get their information to make indictments. Industry." It has the levers of criminal uh, prosecution. If you think you're doing nothing wrong, is a defense. Here we have the story of how they're developing more and quicker ways to do things and kind of seem to have carte blanche. They're using the government, again, which uh, the corporation nation, relative to Kurt Clint Richardson's work, you see they're integ all integrated, incestuously integrated. Google's uh, futuristic radar-based hand sensors get U.S. approval despite interference concerns. Google has been granted a permission to roll out the wearable hand motion sensors that allow users to swipe, scroll, and click their devices through thin air. Concern remains that the devices could interfere with other electronics. Folks, when you read this story, that's the least of your worries when you find out they're using radar. Radar frequency. You think 5G is a problem? Well, they're going to tell you this is within the 5G spectrum. It's radar. You got it on your body now. And guess what? Those frequencies, if you remember the story I told you about, remember the anomaly that you make in the field? They make the, 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 they make the field you, be, you create the anomaly in. It becomes the 5G. These frequencies are the 5G. And they've just got approval, fast-tracked, and we wonder why. I keep telling you why. So radar now is on your hands. You get to do things. They've made some compromise. The Facebook sued because it was going to interfere with their their little bit of uh, the, the, the sharking, uh, the chomping of the information and data. It was going to interfere with them. So they made a compromise. The point is the technology is 5G technology. Now where? You are the distortion in the field. They identify you. That frequency is the 5G. Figure that one out, folks. It's pretty fascinating how fast they're integrating, and they got fast track power for it. It's happening already. Google wins a lawsuit to continue to use facial recognition tech on users without consent. But I don't know if that's so true. You read the story, and this is why I start wondering: Well, is this really the, was this a setup case? Because when you look at it, this is for Google, this was for users. A federal judge has thrown out a lawsuit that alleged Google's non consensual use of facial recognition technology violated users' privacy rights 
allowing the tech giant to continue to scan and store their biometric data. And I'm going, what's the point? What's the case here? This is a frivolous lawsuit. You agreed. You plugged in. Silent weapons for quiet war. You're a user. You don't want it. They tell you to. Listen, they tell it to you about your drive. You don't want to get the ticket. Don't drive. They don't tell you about the little nuance. Forget that. I'm telling you, if you don't want something to happen, don't do it. What was this case? This was failed on its face. You've agreed as a user to the technology because you used it. And yet they made a case out of this, and it becomes precedent. And the story here is stop using their stuff. Stop plugging yourself in. This, to me, was a joke case. I mean, it's not a joke, but I mean, why was this even put forward? This looks like it's a setup case to make a precedent. But really, the truth is, you keep using this stuff. And now it's going to empower the government, the corporations, to continue to, to create the onslaught of AI and all this other data collection and finding out where people are. They didn't, your phones, I guess, weren't enough. They're going to put a little device in a ring on your hand now. So you can just swipe your hand right over your, you don't have to hold the phone no more. Just swipe your hand out in the, out in the middle. It'll pick up where that radar is going and you're radiating yourself. But what the heck? It's convenient, isn't it? We're again, we're plugging ourselves into the silent weapons and they're killing us with them. And then we complain. We complain. We do nothing, nothing, nothing. In fact, we did do so. We consent to the use and then we complain about it. And this is why I start to shake my head. I don't know, folks. I really don't know if we're a society anymore that can pull this off. I really don't know. And eh, in some regard, I, I wonder why I care, but it doesn't matter. I care it now. And I'm able to care, okay? So I guess that's kind of, should feel pretty pretty cool about that. I'm still able to care. Because you know behind the woodshed and reallibertymedia.com, we care. And you'll see that every time I send out a Real Liberty Media Twitter. We care. That's why we're here. And we hope you all that are listening are the ones that care too, and we'll just, we'll become the ripple effect. But we'll do this. It's just going to take a while. It's going to take a lot longer than I thought, but we'll still try it. So what about all this information that they will or will not give you, depending on who you are? Even a prosecutor, local prosecutor can't get it from the DOJ because they're the ones that are doing the extortion and racketeering. Well, that's the other thing we charge. We charge, uh, we charge without producing elements. We charge that the DOJ should look at the local government for potential RICO violations. And I did that to invoke another position later. But at any rate, it doesn't matter. This is the point about these people are doing organized crime right in your face and no one says anything. And I look around and say, if no one's going to say anything about the organized crime that they don't recognize, we're in trouble. But if we want to know the future, we've already seen it. And, it, and it, it's this idea I keep telling you, this is a parasitic amoeba, as I told you earlier. This is a this thing that we're up against. It's transparent to everybody. It functions under the skin. It adapts. It moves. It's an amoeba. Runs. You put a pin in front of it. You think it's microscopic. It's it's a fractal. It's the microcosm of the, what's going on. You put a pin in front of this amoeba. It just travels around it. You put two uh, two pins. It'll travel between it. If you put them close together, it'll travel around them. It's just this thing that keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. And it's a single-cell organism called government. And it it does, it does things. And it does things in the past that we may or may not have aware. A story came through. I think I got this through Guriel. I also think that uh, I saw this come up. Uh, maybe Jules also had this. Uh, this story here coming up. Fifteen years ago, the military tried to record the record whole human lives, it ended badly. So here we have Google winning carte blanche attack through its mechanism by users. It also gets fake facial recognition ability. It has now fast-tracked radar on your body if you thought microwaves were bad. <laughs> here it comes. And they're going to get all this stuff. All they're worried about is the interference of other data parasites. Here, 15 years ago, the military tried this. It's an interesting story about the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, launched an ambitious program aimed at recording essentially all of a person's movements and conversations and everything they listened to, watched, read, and bought. The idea behind the Life Log initiative was to create a permanent, searchable, electronic diary of entire lives, 
Not only would LifeLog immortalize users in a sense, it would also contribute to a growing body of data that military researchers hoped would contribute to the development of artificial intelligence uh, capable of thinking like a human being does. Lifelong, LifeLog was an iPhone before there were iPhones, social media before there was social media. It was potentially all-seeing government surveillance before anyone worried about the NSA or, or had heard of Edward Snowjob. Now, let me just go to what I my observation will stop reading. I want to show you how that, they claim it was before the iPhones and they try to show it was different. They try to explain it doesn't exist, like it failed. My response to this is this is the response of the amoebic invader. Because when you read the story, they got criticized terribly for this prop, this all-inclusive by privacy people, the all-inclusive uh, uh, view. Privacy people were highly critical of it to the point that they made so much noise, which you'd have to do in the outside world for the sustainable development nonsense, against it. They made so much noise, they actually triggered the amoeba to change. And where they point out it was before the iPhone, I'm going to explain to you that it is the iPhone that it, it, it changed into. The response of the parasitic amoeba, amoebic invader being shamed out of existence by privacy advocates is answered in the next part of the story. It says a prescient flash forward to smartphones and an IoT cloud recording bought by voluntarists is the response of DARPA, the military program they thought was, they said is not running and was a failed experiment, is that experiment running today? Amoebic invader is AI. The flash forward to the phones and the IoT cloud recording is bought by you, the voluntarist. At the point of AI being intelligent, so-called, that was a smart, single-celled creature, AIB, as I said. Single-celled is celled with an S. You single-buy your phone. You, they sell it to you. You buy in smart weapons for silent weapons for quiet war. It's such a smart, S-M-A-R-T, smart, single-celled creature, the amoebic invader is. This is the silent weapons of quiet war. It's sustainable as long as you keep buying in. I don't know what more to say. That is how they take you out. They take you out on the on your consumer products. They take you out on the things you think are services. They take you out within your own governments because you don't understand it's already infiltrated, and it's deeply infiltrated. In fact, that may be the lesson I just learned uh, to hear this last few days. It, uh, it's not unaware. I'm not unaware unaware of that. It's just that it's just again come present. How deeply invaded we are by this thing that's transparent to most everybody. I hope uh, I just said some things today that make allow you to see a little bit better, get you invigorated to figure out something you need to do in this new year as we move on in, and hope it isn't like it's been the last six months for me. Uh, hope that we have a little bit better going on. Let's start working together. We're, the only way we're going to do this is pull it together. I'm really wondering about whether we can. Uh, I don't I don't predict that. I'm, I'm actually saying that so we we can actually avoid that. We need to do better, uh, really, within ourselves and for ourselves. And let's not let the gin take care, uh, dissuade us from our objective. Because if what I've seen the last six days was anything, wow, 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 we're going to have to really be plugged in and focused. Uh, thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. I do appreciate everything you do and what what all you offer there and have offered, again, for five almost five years going on in a few more months. Ten years for me at the total broadcasting, uh, which has been a while. Didn't think it would go that fast, but there we are. All y'all that reproduce or reprod or whatever, you see why, normalization of ignorance, and thank you. I noticed you're, you're back. Appreciate that you're okay. I was wondering about that. And Sound Mind, appreciate that. And anybody else who's doing it that I don't know, that you can let me know. I'll just call you out if you want, if you need. Uh, appreciate all that. I'll be with you next week. Tech Diffs or Nature Willow. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, I just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 